Late Tuesday night, images and videos of dozens of officers from the New York Police Department were seen as they began clearing Columbia University from students who were protesting against the war in Gaza. The police entered Hamilton Hall, the part of the campus taken over by student protesters via the second floor using a tactical vehicle. In Los Angeles, at around the same time, Violent clashes broke out after pro-Israel counter-protesters attempted to storm the pro-Palestine encampment. Fireworks, noxious gases, and physical violence were reported to have been witnessed by the campus newspaper reports at the site. Similarly, across several college campuses in the United States, there have been increasing police presence as the pro-Palestine Student protests have continued for almost two weeks, leaving college administrators with difficult decisions to make. However, a couple of colleges also struck agreements with the protest organizers, which has led to a promise of de-escalation at those campuses. Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Keshav Padmanabhan, and I am going to explain the current situation across a few U.S. colleges and universities. You may have read the Prince article on the reasons for the protest or watched last week's episode of Cut the Clutter. In this explainer, I will cover all that has happened since then. Let's start with the incidents at Columbia University, the epicenter of the protests. Protests first began on 17th April. On 18th April, the New York Police Department was called in and cleared the protest site, arresting 108 students, while a few, including Ilan Omar's daughter, Isra Hirsi, were suspended and evicted from campus housing. This led to protests and protest camps being set up across the US with over 25 campuses affected. Almost two weeks later, the NYPD was once again called into the campus to clear out the protesting students. The campus newspaper, the Columbia Spectator, reports that the tents were disassembled at around 11.40 p.m. on Tuesday evening following the NYPD sweep of Hamilton Hall earlier in the evening. The National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby earlier on Tuesday said that the US President Joseph Biden condemns the occupation of college campus buildings at Columbia University and California Polytechnic at Humboldt. Both campuses witnessed a police crackdown with dozens of students being arrested. Police presence will remain at least till 17th May at Columbia University after the request by University President Minou Shafiq. The University President also noted in a letter to the NYPD that she is aware that the police will be using long-range acoustic devices, or the LRAD, that could cause permanent hearing damage against the peaceful student protesters. NYPD also cleared student protesters from the City College of New York a few blocks away from Columbia University on Tuesday night. Detained protesters at the site were carried away on city buses. Across the country on the western coast, at the UCLA campus at around 10.50 p.m. on Tuesday evening, fireworks, tear gas, and fights broke out as pro-Israel counter-protesters attempted to seize the barricades surrounding the pro-Palestine camp and storm the site, reports the campus newspaper, The Daily Broom. The clashes saw first responders called onto the scene, including medical personnel and the fire department, according to the university administration. The Los Angeles Police Department was called in by the university and its officers arrived sometime just before 2 in the morning over there. The University of Arizona Police announced that they were spraying chemical irritants and ordered crowds to disperse late Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning after the university president called them in. Arrests of students have taken place in at least 30 universities across the U.S., according to the New York Times. Over a thousand protesters have been arrested across the country. Two campuses so far, however, have attempted a different approach to the protests, Brown University and Northwestern. Brown University, the Ivy College located in Providence, Rhode Island, struck an agreement with protesters on Tuesday. The university corporation, its highest governing body, will vote on divestment from the companies affiliated with Israel at its October meeting. 
A large number of US colleges and universities have large endowment funds which have invested in companies. One of the more common demands across the protests are where, at various campuses is the divestment of the university from companies either profiteering from the war in Gaza or affiliated to the Israeli military. Another demand includes greater transparency on funding received from Israel and how it's spent by universities. The first university that came to an agreement with the protesters is Northwestern University in Illinois. The administration of the university permitted protests and support for Palestine to continue till at least the 1st of June, while the organizers of the protests will remove all but one tent at the protest site at Deering Meadow. Moreover, the university will re-establish an advisory committee on investment responsibility later this year and create avenues for students to interact with the investment committee of the Board of Trustees. The administration will also create a space for Muslim students and those from the Middle East and North Africa region and provide and renovate a house on campus for these students. This is all for me today. For more from the print, please subscribe below.